everyone, I'm Jane Beasley and this is the QI Insider podcast from North Staffs Combined. Today uh, we have the opportunity to get the inside track on a most amazing project um, that is in progress now with Saab Kaur leading it. Um, this struck me because she shows great courage in this project to tackle the real root of the problem, which of course is what QI is all about. So thank you for joining us. Let's hop in to this conversation with Saab and understand what was going on here. Hi Saab. <laughs> hey, thank you, Jane. Yeah, so um, I was given um, this project to do part of um, the quality improvement um, leadership and quality improvement course uh, that the North Staffs Combined he uh, Healthcare Trust um, um, have been doing. So uh, I think we were the second cohort to do this and we were given um, basically a question to, to look at the job that we do, the role that we do and to, to see what kind of the, what was like our pebble in our shoe, what kind of thing really that bugged us about our job and what could we do to improve um, the work that we do. Uh, my my role as a community alcohol uh, well, community detoxification nurse is predominantly assessing and referring uh, uh, patients that come into the Stoke on Trent Community Drug and Alcohol Service for alcohol and opiate detox and referring them uh, for inpatient detox. Um, there's three nurses on our team, so we have two nurses that deal with the the community side. And, and and then whereas I deal with the more complex people that can't be detoxed from the community and it could be due to various reasons, it could be due to a uh, lack of home support, it could be due to their physical health, a uh, history of seizures, heart conditions, epilepsy, um, mental health as well, like if, if there's risk of um, overdose or self-harm um, and also substance misuse as well if they're taking other illicit substances pregnancy, things like that. So they would need to go in for an inpatient detox. Um, the problem that I was faced with was when I started in November 2020, um, um, it, uh, it came apparent that there was only a certain amount of funded bed days that um, CDAS, Stoke Contract Community Drug and Alcohol Service were commissioned for, um, which was, uh, well, it was 600 bed days. So works out two, two detoxes, uh, referrals per week uh, to the Edward Myers unit. Um, at the time, within that time frame in November 2020, up until uh, uh, October 21, um, there was a total of, um, let me just have a look, so we, we actually had, so we had 600 bed days, but the actual bed days used was 1,073. Um, uh, so I see. So, I see. Yeah. So there was yeah, kind so of um, uh, more demand than what you'd got capacity for. Yeah. So the more bed days were being used than than were truly mm. funded. Yeah. So we're kind of like over budget. Was that a situation? Yeah. So um, we've got actually gone over by four hundred and seventy three beds uh, and. Yeah, so we also, um, obviously, the, the amount of referrals receiving as well. That So um, on average, a month I'd get, for inpatient, I'd get about 20 referrals. Uh, we're looking at around about 10 for um, community. So what what the, so what the so I used for the quality improvement was that the model of for improvement, uh, prod, um, the model for improvement. So there were the five questions, uh, well, three main questions. What, what are we trying to accomplish? Uh, what do we do to measure the test of a change? And what changes did we do, um, uh, including in progress changes? So um, what what I was trying to accomplish was, so what what we thought the problem, main problem was, is the, the uh, it was reoccurrent and frequent admissions, which we call the RAF. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there was a total of, 158 referrals to the Edward Myers unit 
from uh, from CDAS. Uh, and from that 158, 61.4% were non-RAF, and then we had the 38.6 that were reoccurring and frequent. So what I mean by reoccurring and frequent were people who were um, who had more than three detoxes ever in total, or they've had a detox within the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to to tackle that 38.6% of people coming in to just mm -hmm. you know to see where as a series where what we can do more as well to stop people like where and, and looking at what 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 is actually going um you know what more we can do for yeah. um that patient yeah. so your goal then was to reduce the amount of inappropriate recurrent and re and frequent admissions um and what and what did you in your mind, what did you think was might help you with that? Did you have a sense that was there a particular tool out there that people use for inpatient um, detox? Was there something there that should sort of help the team a little bit? So uh, obviously having discussions with the Edward team, um, the one thing that they always asked for was an aftercare plan mm -hmm. because have aftercare plan have they got a plan because it's a seven day detox obviously they haven't they, they come purely in for the detox and it's the hard work starts after mm -hmm. so i think so part of obviously trying to tackle that was have they got an aftercare plan and to, to and to come with this come up with this aftercare plan and has an mdt been completed for 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 the client or the patient um and with regards to mdt is that what other services are involved what other services could be involved with the person is there a housing need is there a mental health need um uh, is there social services involved you know it's just so it's kind of getting every, all the professionals available again recovery worker together again myself but it was just and sitting the the patient the client to get with us and, and basically devising the aftercare plan mm. and, and and that was what we were hoping to do uh, for all uh, people, all patients that were triggering the RAF. Okay, so um, how would you uh, sort of describe? So we think we talked about the model for improvement, and you. So what was your answer to the question? What are we trying to accomplish? What did you eventually land on? If what was the sentence that went in there? Yeah. So um, more or less halfway through. Through my project, um, there was actually a change to the funding of the beds. So um, there was an introduction of the West Midlands Detox Framework, uh, which came into place around February time. So we were actually given this extra pot of money. And part of that framework, what they requested, so um, was um, it was called a, um, they were like a, it's a it was a tool. Um, there were three steps, like are you ready steps. And it's like through so through the referral process, um, the recovery worker would ask the patient, "Are you ready? Uh, have you worked towards what kind of work have you been doing towards your detox? Have you tried to reduce? Have you tried? Have you looked into the detox and discussed your de the detox routine?" And it's knowing that at the point of referral, that 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 the patient, the client, is aware of what the detox entails, what they need to do afterwards. And, um, and 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 there was this toolkit that was um, was used by another service, CGL Change Grow Live, and I thought what what um, it would be ideal to implement that to the the CDAS uh, patients, um, because it, it is a tool that's being used in other services, and um, and it's actually making it's asking them the question: Are you are you actually ready? Because in the past we've had people come in for detox, and get to detox and then realise actually they weren't ready and they not looked at the bigger picture and they've not looked at other services or other support that they need and they're still having the, having the detox but then going back out to the same social mental health problems that they've faced before going in. Ah, so that was contributing to this uh, recurrent and frequent admission rate you, you you supposed your hypothesis is that actually if um, this tool uh, 
the are you ready tools are used that that might have an effect mm -hmm. on on this on this figure so tell me how the project developed and where you are now with it that'd be great uh, so some of the challenges obviously I faced was uh, the introduction of the West Midlands detox framework in February, which would is going to uh, uh, impact on my results because in January I was actually told that I, w I couldn't refer uh, any more uh, referrals to the Edward Myers because of this overspend uh, by the service. But the work was being done in the background for this West Midlands detox framework to be in place and for having this. Uh, additional funding. Um, so then there was changes in the referral process. I tried to look at um, developing a new pathway, a uh, detox referral pathway, so that the Are You Ready tools are completed before the uh, patient to refer to myself. Um, some of the fund, some of the uh, challenges I faced was some people were physically or really unwell, whereas you know I couldn't really wait for the recovery worker to complete the Are You Ready. I still had to do that assessment, request bloods. And then action on their blood results as well. If 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 they came back quite deranged and they needed, you know, A and E or further intervention, uh, medical mm. intervention. So, so having the staff on board to implement the tools was quite of a challenge. Obviously, we know people are quite busy and and uh, in the in the workload and, and and there is quite the alcohol team at see that. So I've got quite a high caseload of, of of people coming through the service. So asking them to this additional piece of work was quite of a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, having got the stakeholders on board, like to, I was talking, because within CDAS, there's, um, there's obviously you've got the North South combined clinical team, and then you've got um, um, the BAC staff who are the recovery team, and then the We Are With You staff who are the assessment team. So it's like having three different services in one, and it's like getting together with them, meeting with them, and explaining to them that I'm doing this project and the challenges that I face um, with regards to. You know the overspend and the the, the the referrals and 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 initially well I, the, the actual the, the main concern is not the overspend but the fact that people if we're not doing as a service we're not doing anything about these people who are uh, reoccurring you know um infrequent kind of um admissions they're going to eventually the physical is going to eventually deteriorate and it could result in death so we need to be doing something as a service mm. and have like a separate pathway or doing more work with these people yeah yeah so there's that you know the money the money was there as as a is there in this project the complexity here and why i say oh this shows great courage is that actually you're working technically across organizations because you've got multiple providers to mm. uh influence with this new with this new tool and the new approach and to look at the work with you and I think that's always more tricky to do and of course yeah. like always everyone's very very busy and mm. I think it's nice that what you've highlighted there is the real focus is getting it right for the service users because mm. there are implications if we don't so that's why I think that this project shows great courage because all of those aspects are quite tricky um so where are you now with it where did you get to um on what's next with this project okay so um with regards to the the tools obviously i've, I've um, disseminated the the tool to the the recovery workers team leaders who've then passed it on to the recovery work so they've all got the tools uh, they all know what they should be doing I did a proposed referral pathway. We also looked at, to reduce the bed days, we looked at, uh, we call them step down beds. So instead of a seven day detox, um, anyone that is physically, you know, stable, not nothing too concerning about their physical health or their mental health stable, but the only reason why they can't come in, um, can't have a community detox is lack of home support. Uh, we thought, what we do is refer them for a step down bed so they come in for just a five day admission um so there we could look at reducing the bed days um so yeah it's just now it's just i'm at that point now where after it's just sharing this work like i wanted to have a, a meeting with some of the, the we are with your staff and the and show them uh, my actual quality improvement 
project and and explain to them because when I first started this job it was I was it was never really the the funding side of it was never really explained to me and I was just assessing and referring I thought well if, if, if the patient client was asking for a detox just refer them because it was a referral pathway not looking at you know not looking into it deeper and realizing yeah. that yeah there's yeah. actually there's other things that need to be done as well and yeah and I think only when you get into the job that you realize um you know that 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 then it could be improved the service can be improved and I know at the, it's hard work now even for the recovery work because eventually it, it will be less the caseloads will be less because they will have more successful detoxes in the future yes that's brilliant so you're sharing everything that you've done and mm. and sharing this new way of working to get the impact and to get um the most appropriate use of the resources that you've got I think it's always very interesting that when when we're working as clinicians, sometimes we don't understand the kind of way things are funded and the drivers behind. And for some people, not for everyone, but for some people, once they see that, they respond differently to different ways of working because they say, oh, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason. Yeah. You can see the whole picture. If you're just asked to do something and you're not in involved and they've not had the work explained by someone like yourself, then you might think, oh, I'm not so keen on doing that. <laughs> or you don't feel as engaged. But if you've, you know, if you've had a conversation and you've had a look at the had a look at the work that's been done, you remain convinced because it's going to be better for those that um, use the service and for better for those better to work in. Because that's more joyous, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> we're well, having a good result. We feel good. <laughs> we're having yeah. a good effect. You know, we feel good. So, um, is there anything else you'd like to share, or do you think that summarises it um, nicely? Yeah, I think that's some kind of some summarise it nicely. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, what piece of advice would you give someone that's about to start a project like this? um what advice yeah. would, you, would you give them? i think what the main things i learned during this project was obviously the importance of collecting the relevant data um using that data to the measure obviously we need to measure the results so um and then talking to key people like stakeholders like the importance of st stakeholders in your project um and and it's not always the, when I first got into spread, I thought all the stakeholders are like my managers or the people high above. It's not always about them. It's about the patients as well, like and 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 the the recovery workers. It, it it just the amount of people involved for your quality improvement project to actually work is you know it's it's everyone really. It's not mm. it's, um, yeah. So I think yeah, and it's just having and and and. The leadership side kind of taught me how to kind of how to speak and approach to people, pre people, and you know, and ask it, ask for things to be, you know, because changing the service is quite, I would say, quite. It is it it is a difficult sometimes, you know. It's like changing how people work or asking them to do additional work can be quite, you know, you can be faced with quite people that could be. I don't know, they, we, we did it in the in the course that they call, well, they call them saboteurs, not necessarily saboteurs, but they kind of like you 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 kind of explain a, a new way of working, and they will you know they can have their guard up, or they could say you know they look at ways that no no that won't work or whatever. But it's but at the end of the day, once you've got this data figures, and if you see an improvement, then you know it's working, and if it doesn't work, then you can look at another way of another way another quality improvement project you know mm -hmm. thank you thank you that's amazing and right at the beginning and i said that saab um project really struck me because of the level of courage that is required to bring your stakeholders together collect your data present that back and lead a new way forward that shows commitment and courage so I thank you so much for that and for sharing it today and I'm 
hope that listeners that you've enjoyed that and if you want to know more about that um, we have internally within our organization we've put her project on SharePoint you can see it there um, and yeah thank you listeners and we look forward to being with you next time bye for now mm -hmm.